As Biden takes a victory lap over the killing of a top al-Qaeda leader, there are new concerns that Afghanistan could be a safe haven for terrorists. I'm on all the worry. I always, I always say it wrong. Uh, who was bin Laden's deputy and the mastermind behind 9-11. He was killed by a CIA drone strike while standing on a balcony in Kabul. The CIA had tracked his, this top terrorist for months before taking him out in a wealthy area where he was staying with his family at the home of an aide to a Taliban leader. Zawahri's boldness to be out in the open raises alarms that al-Qaeda could be making a comeback in Afghanistan. The White House says that's not the case. So we know that the Taliban was harboring the world's most wanted terrorist. You guys gave a whole country to a bunch of people that are on the FBI most wanted list. What did you think was going to happen? I take issue with the premise that we gave a whole country to terrorist groups. I mean, again, I'd, 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 I'd encourage you to ask. Harboring the world's number one terrorist. The question, I mean, Peter, the way you asked that, it makes it sound like we owned Afghanistan a year ago. It wasn't our country. Um, it was an independent, sovereign state. And the president made a bold decision to end a war that had been going on for 20 years. But we said at the time that as we depart Afghanistan, we're going to keep vigilant. We're going to stay ready. And we're not going to let Afghanistan become a safe haven for terrorists who threaten our homeland. It always was. We don't own it, but we paid a lot of money for it for a long time. So it was kind of like a long-term lease. Uh, hasn't it always been a haven for terrorists? When did we ever think that we could trust the Taliban? No, of course not. And we're not going to debate whether we should have pulled out or not. That debate is over. If a Republican's elected president next or another Democrat, neither president is going to put more soldiers back into Afghanistan. <laughs> so the question is now, how much intelligence and informants do we have in country to be able to pull up for aerial targeting from drones? And it looks like we have some good assets on the ground because we just wiped this guy off the map with this ninja bomb, a Hellfire blade missile. They, these things just slice you up like that. It doesn't even explode. Slap chop. I love it. Uh, I, wish, I wish I had known about ninja bombs before. I would have been talking about that forever. Um, yes, we're going to see terrorist groups reconstitute in Afghanistan. I think we should assume that, but... We just can have to keep our eyes on them with the surveillance up in the sky. That's why we have such expensive satellites. I'm worried also about the southern border, because if all of a sudden you can have all these terrorist groups set up in Afghanistan, what makes you think they're not setting up in the Northern Triangle, in Mexico? And we just learned that 56 people on the terror watch list were nabbed crossing the southern border. And we have, like, what, like hundreds of thousands of gotaways every six months. So some terrorist from Afghanistan or for wherever, has crossed into our southern border, into our country, and the Biden administration has not done anything about it. That's what worries me. So if they haven't done anything about it to this point, you know, what is the plan going forward? Because as much as people admire Admiral Kirby, and, you know, he does a much better job than any other communications person uh, in the federal government, especially right now, uh, do we, can we be assured that the United States has a plan going forward for what might be brewing in Afghanistan specifically, not to mention other countries and regions? They said their plan was always this over-horizon capability, which when they pull out of Afghanistan was questioned because we don't have a, any base nearby, especially since we keep a base in Afghanistan to carry out these attacks. So the White House is using this moment, which is great for the country, great for the world, um, to say that, that that plan is working. Now, they're trying to spin their way out of the one-year anniversary of the catastrophic Afghanistan withdrawal, which was a complete disaster, one of the largest hostage crises we've ever seen. There's still people trapped there who are going to get out, people who helped us in the war. Um, and it doesn't excuse that, but it is good to know that they were able to take him out. However, I was thinking about the Bo Bergdahl swap because when they did that big rose garden ceremony and it was like, we got our guy back and they sold it as this really amazing thing. And then people started asking questions about what actually happened and it turns out it wasn't what, it, what they said it was. This is kind of similar, um, you know, great strike, glad he's dead, but the fact that he was in Kabul, just hanging out, being harbored by the Taliban raises lots of questions about what's happening there. And Kirby said this afternoon, that al-Qaeda is not reconstituting itself there. But this morning, he said that they were actively planning attacks. So it is a problem. Um, but if they can handle it in the fashion that they did over the weekend, then that's a very good thing, and it keeps soldiers off the ground as well. Yes, and, and that is obviously the ultimate goal. And to your point, no president is going to commit ground troops to Afghanistan. Right.
Um, but, you know, did the botched withdrawal have an impact on who felt confident reconstituting over there? You know, and, and if we had gotten out differently, would we have a, a different outcome in terms of who's there right now? Well, we do know that terrorists are paying attention to how we feel about things here. They're monitoring exactly what our media is saying about what our people who used to serve in previous administrations, the folks at institutes like Brookings, at the Council on Foreign Relations, AEI, Heritage, everywhere, are saying about how we're handling our foreign policy decisions. And the Afghanistan withdrawal was bad. universally decried, right? And everyone was talking about how we are weaker for the way that it was done, not that it wasn't the right decision. So I think they're certainly measuring that. And to add to Katie's point about how he was just hanging out on a balcony at home in, you know, in the Capitol, his wife and daughter came a few months earlier, and they were just roaming around like normal people there as well. And we know how valuable, obviously, uh, families are of these kinds of terrorists. What I think is interesting looking forward is, you know, what's next for al-Qaeda? So the guy who was the number three guy, bin Laden, then al-Zawahiri, and al-Adal, I think is how you pronounce his name, he actually lives in Iran. Mm -hmm which creates a whole other complication to this. So people have questioned his credibility in terms of coming to the top of the heap because of that, or does this mean that now we're going to be expanding, mm -hmm. right? And wouldn't Iran love to get in on this kind of conversation? And then are we going to see uh, you know, a confluence of these states that are being run by terrorists turning against U.S. foreign policy? Well, is, is this just, was this just a political move, Greg? Was just this a way to distract from a horrible series of news cycles because, you know, we're hearing that the CIA had eyeballs on him for months and months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had developed uh, basically a personality profile of what he was doing and when he was doing it. They knew where he was. They built a model of the place he was staying in. So, you know, the strike comes at a curious time. Katie brings up the botched withdrawal was August one year ago. So is this a way to not only distract from that, but also some of these horrible numbers in terms of GDP and inflation. I don't know. I mean, you know, it was like the media was dying to write those Joe's got his groove back articles. They were almost pre-written like obituaries. It kind of sounded like it in a way. And I think it's fair to be pissed off that this guy was hanging out casually for who knows how long. I mean, what in God's name is a white supremacist doing in Afghanistan? Uh, but it is a reminder. It is a reminder that terrorism never goes away. It just grows a tail or it grows a head. And when bad stuff happens under a president, it's on them. And when good stuff happens under them, it's we blame on the Democrats. Yeah, Before there you him. go. <laughs> no, I think you got. I think you got to give him credit. But the problem with Joe, the pro the hard, what's hard about giving him credit, is that he refuses responsibility for the bad stuff. So it's kind of hard when something good happens to pat him on the back, even though I think we should, even though we know that he probably had very little to do with this. He's kept in the dark like a rare mushroom. He was totally against uh, bin Laden, killing bin Laden. So I don't know. I, I think he was just, he's very lucky. And Soleimani as well. Yes. But I do think it's a cause for celebration when somebody like this dies. I think it's, I'm very reluctant to turn good news into bad, uh, given the choices. You know, I'd rather have Al Zahari dead than alive. I wish we'd killed him. 20 or 30 years ago, 20 years ago when he was in his 50s, you know, he outlived Ashley Babbitt by 35 years. I would rather have that reversed. All right. Well said. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.